JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 16th. I am Haralambos Ambos Pistoros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed uh, against uh, the other G10 currencies on Wednesday during the Asian morning Thursday. It lost uh, the most ground versus CAT, NOC and JPY in that order, while it underperformed against uh, the Swiss franc and the British pound. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the Euro, the Aussie and SEC. The strengthening of uh, the oil-related uh, CAT and NOC combined with, uh, with a weakness in the safe haven CHF suggests that markets uh, traded in risk-on fashion yesterday. However, the fact that uh, the yen was among the main gainers uh, points otherwise. Thus, with the performance in the FX world painting a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity sphere in order to clear things up. Here, major EU and US indices closed in positive territory, perhaps on reports of uh, progress with regards to a coronavirus vaccine. Market participants may have been encouraged by a study which uh, showed that uh, Moderna Inc.'s experimental drug provoked immune, immune uh, responses, as well as by reports that uh, data on a vaccine developed by Oxford University could be announced as soon as today. Having said all that, uh, though Asian bourses did not follow the recovery and instead slid, even after data showed that the Chinese economy rebounded more than anticipated in the, more than anticipated in the second quarter. Yesterday we noted that uh, this data may not, pro may not prove a major market mover as investors may have already been waiting for a decent print. In any case, the switch to risk off uh, during the Asian session may have been the result of fresh headlines raising concerns over the, over the relationship between the US and China. Yester yesterday, US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said that the US will impose visa restrictions on Chinese firms which facili facilitate uh, human rights viol violations which, uh, while, ac while according to a White House official, the Trump administration is expected to take action in the next weeks to address security risks posed uh, by Chinese uh, mobile apps, the likes of uh, TikTok and WeChat. On the one hand, we have news uh, pointing to a positive vaccine trials, which are very positive for the, for the markets. As with a vaccine ready, governments may not uh, need to proceed with uh, new full-scale lockdowns and thereby allow their economies, their economies to continue recovering. On the other hand, though, infected cases by the virus are, are still on uh, acceleration mode, while tensions between the world's uh, two largest economies remain uh, elevated, something that could uh, jeopardize any progress made so far with regards to a trade accord. As we have been noting in the last few days, we will stand pat until we get clearer signs with regards to the market's uh, forthcoming direction. Yesterday, apart from headlines surrounding the coronavirus and the US-China saga, we also had a Bank of Canada monetary policy decision. The bank decided to keep interest rates unchanged at 0.25% and noted that they will stay there until the 2% inflation target is sustainably achieved. Officials also added that they will continue to buy 5 billion Canadian dollars per week in quantitative easing until the economy uh, until the economic recovery is well underway and that they stand ready to adjust their programs if market conditions uh, change. Overall, the risks appear, appear to be to, tilted to the downside, largely because of the potential of a second wave of the virus, policymakers also said. 
Despite the dovish, uh, the dovish message, the Canadian dollar was found as the main gainer among the G10 currencies this morning. This means that apart from the risk on trading during the EU and US sessions, the Luni may have also benefited as uh, heading into the meeting there may have been expectations over a QE expansion. Anyhow, with oil prices staying in uptrend mode, despite the OPEC plus group agreeing to taper record supply curbs uh, from August, the Luni may stay relatively strong if market sentiment improves again. If this is the case, we would expect it to perform better against the safe havens like the US dollar, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. Now, as for today, the central bank torch will be passed to the ECB. At its latest meeting, this bank decided to increase its pandemic emergency purchase program by 600 billion euros to a total of 1,350 billion euros, extending the horizon of the purchases to at least the end of June 2021. Officials also repeated that they remain ready to adjust all of their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards their aim in a sustained manner. Now, with the headline CPI rate at, um, at 0.1% year-over-year, the core one at 0.9% year-over-year, and the composite PMI still pointing to contraction, although coming in better than expected, the door for further easing remains wide open. However, with officials ex expanding their stimulative efforts just at the prior gathering, we don't expect any new action at this meeting. We believe that they may prefer to wait and see how and whether their latest decision is affecting the broader economic recovery. That said, we expect President Lagarde to urge EU governments to take action as soon as possible, especially after failing to find common ground on a, f on a 750 billion euros uh, rescue fund. Investors may decide not to shake the boat after this meeting, as they may prefer to focus on a special EU summit scheduled for tomorrow and Saturday, where leaders will discuss once again the rescue plan. If they indeed find common, if they did find common ground, the euro is likely to get benefited. The opposite may be true if they once again fail to agree. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during, uh, during the early European morning, we already got the UK employment uh, report for May. The unemployment rate stayed unchanged at 3.9% instead of rising to 4.2% as the forecast suggested, while the employment change, uh, the employment change showed that the economy uh, lost less than anticipated jobs. As for wages, both the including and excluding bonuses uh, rates declined by less than expected. Later, we have the US retail sales for June and the initial jobless claims for last week. Expectations are for both uh, the headline and core sales to have slowed to 5% month over month from 17.7 and 12.4% respectively, while initial jobless claims are forecast to have slowed to 1.25 million from 1.314 million. As uh, for the speakers, uh, beside ECB President Christine Lagarde, who, who will hold a press conference after the ECB decision, we have four more officials stepping up to the rostrum today. Uh, Bank of England uh, Governor Andrew Bailey, Bank of England Chief Economist Andy Haldane, New York Fed President John Williams, and Chicago Fed President Charles Evans. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.